Hi folks and welcome to DevTrends. Today we're going to talk about GitHub acquisition by Microsoft and Dino, a revamped Node.js made by original Node creator. So main developer news of the last week is that Microsoft has acquired GitHub for $7.5 billion. This led to a division where some devs hated the fact and others were pretty okay and even happy about it. And those who are against the acquisition say, as usual, that Microsoft is a corporation of evil, it is extremely closed and profit-oriented, is against open standards and so on. But this is not totally true, at least in recent years. When Satya Nadella became CEO of Microsoft, the company chose a course to make itself much more open to the general public in various areas, including development, than ever before. As for us, there are two hard evidences that Microsoft is on the right way. It's TypeScript and VS Code, and they both from Microsoft. So TypeScript is a subset of JavaScript with types. So JavaScript has a feature of being a dynamic language and lacks of types, and TypeScript just added a missing part for many to boost development even further. And TypeScript became a real game changer in the last year or two, making developers happier all around the world. It really takes developer experience to the next level, it's fun to write and it's completely free and open source. And next Microsoft Bright creation is VS Code. VS Code is a code editor that was created pretty much as a, an alternative to Atom and as Electron based app. And last year it became the most popular IDE in the world, according to Stack Overflow. It combines high extensibility thanks to JavaScript, rich plugin system and relatively good performance, especially considering that VS Code Core is based on Electron. The only uncertainty is what awaits Atom, because Atom is being developed by GitHub and GitHub is now owned by Microsoft and Microsoft builds VS Code. But even here I'm sure guys will find a way, especially when Atom developers have already stated that the work on the editor will be continued as usual. So, as you can see, Microsoft is really pushing its limits in desire to be more open to the community. And if you're still not fully convinced in Microsoft's position about open source, check this thread on Twitter by former Microsoft employee. He's been working in the company during its turning years and he says that Satya really turned things around considering open source. And there are a good phrase somewhere here. Uh, why? So it says that they've changed the default. It was no longer why should this development tool be open sourced. It was why shouldn't it be? As for me, Microsoft does really great job, at least in terms of open source, and I'm totally sure with Satya and all the great developers out there, it will help GitHub to evolve and become even better software. On the latest JSConf EU that took place a couple of days ago in Berlin, Ryan Dahl, creator of Node.js, made a great presentation about things he regrets in Node.js. In it, he discussed some points which could be uh, developed earlier, like promises, or could be made completely different, like making Node.js process sandbox and thus leveraging system security. So, this presentation is awesome alone, I really recommend watching it full, but the greatest part is in the end. There, Ryan presents his new creation called Deno, it's like Node in reverse. Deno is a secure runtime written in TypeScript and Go and built on V8. It has right these features that were missing in original Node.js and were talked about in this presentation. For example, Dino is a sandbox by default and that means it doesn't have access to the network and file system is read-only. Here is the repository. And however, you can enable this functionality with special tags. Uh, also, Deno supports importing modules like this, so right from the web while putting them in cache for further usage. And there is currently a work in progress to support top-level awaiting code. There are many more interesting concepts implemented in Deno, for example, a message system based on protobuf, and you can check it in the presentation, it is truly worth watching full. 
And don't forget that Deno is an early prototype right now, but it has already got its direction and it will be very interesting to see how it goes and where it applies the current Node.js infrastructure. That's all for today, folks. All the links are in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay trendy!